All right. Bob Reese has been working as a salmon guide in Oregon for almost 30 years. Yeah. You know, we operate a $1.5 billion a year sport fishing industry here in Oregon, and people come to the state because of its natural resources, and, you know, salmon and steelhead is a big part of that. When he started back in 1996, things were good. He was doing a job he loved. There you go, yay! And the fish, they were plentiful. But that's changed over the last couple decades. We're left what uh, we historically had, you know, around 200 days of meaningful opportunity. We're really down to uh, maybe about 50. And there's one key indicator Reese keeps close tabs on to know how the season's going to be. We watch with a lot of anxiety how much snow is piling up in the Cascade Range. This is Deer Creek. Uh, it's a trailhead. Chris Jordan, a fish biologist with NOAA, has been studying the relationship between snow and salmon for decades. We are at about 4,000 feet of elevation. He said when it comes to snowpack, looks can be deceiving. Above 6,000 feet, it's a normal snow year. Snowpack in the past level of the Cascades, about four to 6,000 feet, has been declining over the last decade. Now, we're in an El Nino year, so lower snowpack isn't exactly surprising. But climate change has been pushing temps up for years now. And you don't have to look farther than our glaciers to see the impacts. Well, glaciers actually um, are the tangible indicator of what's happening to our snowpack. If we had lots of snowpack in the winter, we'd have bigger glaciers. That's Andrew Fountain, professor of geography at Portland State University. Yep. Glaciers form when more snow falls on an area than melts in the summer. Each new layer of snow compresses the layer beneath it, eventually turning into ice. But the last century has not been kind to our glaciers. Between 1907 and 2014, the glaciers on Mount Hood have shrunk by roughly 43%. And that's happening all over the Northwest. And the glaciers on the Olympic Peninsula should disappear by 2070. That's reflective of disappearing snowpack, as well as increased melt in the summer. That spells trouble for the region's fish. Snowpack and glaciers in the Northwest act as frozen reservoirs that release water as they melt over the warm summer months feeding the rivers and streams fish rely on. The timing and amount of flow in the river systems that are fed by snowmelt is critical for spring chinook and for steelhead. And even if we stopped burning fossil fuels today, temperatures won't start to decline for decades. So does that mean our beloved fish species are doomed? Jordan explained that water is stored in two ways. And it's stored either as snow or it's stored in the spongy you know, floodplains in the, in the soil as, as shallow groundwater. Now, we can't change how much snow falls, but we can restore some of that sponge. So this is Wychus Creek. And this to show us how that works, recent, uh, Jordan took us to a spot overlooking Wychus Creek, just outside of Sisters. Before it was restored, the creek had one main channel with high banks and fast-flowing water. To restore it to its natural state, crews essentially flattened the land where the land was high, lower that where the land was low, fill it back in. Now, the creek meanders over a wide area. What that does is that allows the water that would be in the channel and leave the system really quickly, time to spread out and to soak in. It's to re-wet that sponge. And this is, this is where water is stored throughout the year. Without a reliable snowpack, restoring rivers and creeks is probably our best hope for retaining the flows we need to keep salmon around. Safe to say we need to do a lot more of it. And for river guides like Bob Reese, the stakes couldn't be higher. You know, we're having to find other work. There's not a full-time fishing guide left here. But, you know, this is a heritage for a lot of people. There's third-generation fishing guides that are working areas of Oregon because this is something that we grew into and, and we've historically had a, a love of. Kale Williams joins me now. Kale, I really appreciate how your stories are always well researched and sourced, talking to people who are experiencing this firsthand. Great job there. First question I have for you though, what is the urgency on this? How quickly are people moving to make change? How's that looking? I mean, there are lots of people in lots of different parts of the Pacific Northwest working on habitat restoration for salmon. And mm -hmm. A lot of that has to do with snowpack, but you have to think about the scale of the problem. I mean, this is an ecosystem wide problem where we are losing a source of water that these fish have depended on for thousands of years. So when I'm talking to these folks, it almost seems like there is no amount of effort that you could throw at it, not reasonably, that would really be sufficient. Okay, but not all doom and gloom, you know, we have to do something rather than nothing, right? There's that, that sentiment? Absolutely, and that, that's the tricky thing with climate change is that it is such a big problem, but every little small thing that you do can help. 
and the more coverage, the more re recognition of that, the better. Absolutely. And the trickle down effect of this, it's not just salmon, although we've focused on salmon uh, tonight and here before, there's other elements, right? Absolutely. I mean, as you've seen throughout this shrinking snowpack series, it's affecting irrigators, it's affecting people who work and recreate in the snow, mm -hmm. but it's also affecting other parts of the natural ecosystem. I mean, you've got salmon, and if they wink out, you know, the species that depend on them are also in trouble. Just today, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife listed the southern resident orca as endangered, and they're a species that relies heavily on Chinook salmon. Wow, great. Thank you, Kale. We appreciate it. More to come. So what do you think about our shrinking snowpack series? Did anything surprise you? Did it change your perspective? Let us know. Email the story at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail 503-226-5090.